Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a small, nice, cozy little book haul of books that I bought when I was in Japan. So if you watched my last vlog, which was me in Tokyo, I think it was, um, you will know that I recently had a trip to Japan. There's quite a few Japan vlogs to come and they will start popping up soon, but um, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the books I got when I was over there. There's not heaps and heaps of books here, this is just a small to moderate book haul. Um, I don't tend to buy books en masse, like generally when I buy books I buy like one at a time and I, I don't go shopping for physical books very often, but there are quite a few really nice English bookstores in Japan that sell books by Japanese authors that you can't generally get here in physical bookstores. Um, and I so prefer to buy books from physical bookstores than buying online for like a boatload of different reasons. So the first book is this one and it is The Forest of Wool and Steel by Natsu Miyashita. I have already finished this book so I read most of it when we were in Japan just like on the train and stuff. Um, but I also just recently finished it after getting home and it was so 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 brilliant. Like a lot of the Japanese books I've read or like Japanese lit I've read so far has been dark and gloomy and have a lot of really intense themes and this one was just such a delightful lovely book. It's literally just about a young man who lives in Hokkaido, he lives in like a rural town in the mountains and his dream is to become a piano tuner. He like watches someone puning a, ch puning a piano? My goodness. Oh my god you can tell it's been a really long week. Tuning a piano. Um, when he's in high school and he just falls in love with the way the the process of how tuning a piano goes. He embarks on this journey to become a piano tuner and it's just a really, really, really beautiful story. And there's a lot of linkage between the piano and how the piano is made and nature and like the beauty of the sound of the piano and the beauty of nature and how magic arises from these things. A lovely book and I so recommend it because it's very lighthearted and nice and set in rural Japan and definitely recommend. The second book I picked up in Japan is this one. It's another fiction book and it is Convenience Store Women by Sayaka Murata. Um, I've been wanting to read this book for ages. It has a really cool premise. It's literally about a woman who works in a konbini or a convenience store in Japan and it's written by a woman who spent like 18 years working in a convenience store. One day she's just like working at Family Mart or Lawson or whatever it was and the next day she's like winning all of these awards for this book and it's just such a remarkable story. I don't know much more about the book aside from the premise of it's about this lady, she's I think 36 years old. Yep, she's 36 years old, she's never had a boyfriend, she's been working in the same convenience store for 18 years. Um, and her parents want her to get a better job, there's a lot of pressure on her from society for what she's supposed to be doing, like not working in a convenience store. But yeah, sounds very very cool and I'm excited to read it. The next book we got in Japan is this one, it is Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sakegawa and I didn't actually pick this book. We went to the bookstore and my pick was The Forest of Wool and Steel and my boyfriend actually chose this one. I think he's about halfway through it but I'm probably going to be reading it pretty soon so I'm excited for that. Um, it is about a man who goes to work in a sweets shop, like a traditional sweets shop. I think the shop sells like dorayaki or something like that so like Imagine a pancake with the like, red bean paste on the inside and he doesn't have a very good past. He's like a criminal record and all this stuff and he meets this like older lady who helps him discover things about life. I'm pretty sure that's the premise of this book. It sounds very, very cool. I'm excited to read it. It has a really nice color. Like I really like the pink and the blue and the little illustrated people. So I'm quite excited to give this a go. Tyler has said that it's really good so far. Um, I think he's like halfway through it and he's enjoying it, so I am excited to read it. Now, the next lot of books that we got, they are pretty much Japanese language resources. So, um, as a lot of you guys know, I am studying Japanese haphazardly and I'm getting there and it's a slow journey because it's a difficult language and I really wanted to get some books that I could practice translating on. Like really my goal is I want to be able to read books in Japanese one day. And I don't think that's going to be anytime soon because my Japanese is not there yet, but I wanted the resources anyway. And a resource I've been looking for for a really long time is actually Harry Potter. So I 
finally found Harry Potter in Japanese. And yeah, I bought these second hand. They were 337 yen each from Book Off. If you want second hand books in Japan, go to Book Off. Book Off is great, it's cheap, it's really good. If you go to like specific secondhand bookstores, you will find antiques and they will be incredibly expensive. And yeah, the beauty of getting kids books is that the language is quite a lot easier than it would be if it was an adult book. Also, obviously I know Harry Potter really, really well, so I feel like that's gonna help make this a little bit easier because um, translation is not an easy thing. But yeah, pretty much just wanted a learning resource. Um, and sticking with that theme, the next one is Japanese stories for language learners by Anne McNulty and Eriko Sato. This one is kind of similar to the picture book I showed in, I think, my favorite kids' book video. What's cool about these is that basically it's just like myths and stuff. And on this side, there is the English version, and on this side, there is like the Japanese version. And all of the kanji has furigana, which is like the little like really really easy hiragana symbols on top of the kanji that explain how to pronounce it. So yeah, this one is like myths and short stories and stuff. What makes this book really cool is that it also comes with a CD so we can do some listening practice. And then the last two books I also bought secondhand. Um, I don't specifically know the titles of these two books and so if you want to buy them, I am not gonna be very very helpful to you. I can have a go at reading the title um, if this is the title, and I think it is, then it would be Arashi no Yoro ni, um, and I'll just go ahead and guess that it's about a wolf and a goat. The reason I picked this book up is because it looks absolutely beautiful, like, the illustrations in this book are so interesting and cool, and it's still a kid's book, so it still has, like, the furigana on the little characters. So yeah, that's why I bought this book, because it looks really, really beautiful and really interesting. Um, and it's still a kid's book, so it has all of those little helpers. Um, bought this second hand for 1200 yen, so like uh, $15 Australian or $12 American. So the title of this book, um, assuming that this part is the title and this part is explaining how to pronounce the title for little kids, um, it would be Yagumo no Kuni no Daikatsu Sen. That is the title of this book. I don't know what that means, but um, yeah, it looks very cool. Illustrations are very, very cute. The rest of the book isn't doesn't have that many illustrations, though there are a few in here. And yeah, another cool learning resource because it's a kids' book, and kids' books are a lot have a lot simpler characters in them and um, should be easier to read than adult books. And yeah, those are all the books I bought in Japan. I will write a list of them in the description down below, so if you want to check them out, you can. I hope those are the titles of those two Japanese books because I don't actually know. I will put them in the description anyway. <laughs> Please let me know what books you guys are reading at the moment or if you've recently picked up something that you think looks very, very cool or you're really excited about. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.